you know when I when I drink alcohol it it basically just it takes over my mindset it, it controls everything I do it completely changes who I am as a person and it takes me on a merry-go-round when drugs were available you know I didn't have the defense to say no even if I was racing the next day because you know I was drinking because I felt bad and I didn't want to feel anymore so I did and took anything I could not to feel. And if that meant that I was going to sacrifice my career at that, at that moment in time, then that's what I did. You know, and the next day I'd wake up and I'd be like, who was that person? <laughs> that wasn't me, you know, but it was me. And it's what, it was me when I drank, when I had alcohol. It, it, uh, it's a very dangerous substance for me and it's, it's something that almost destroyed my life. So obviously within racing, you get a lot of days that are disappointing, you know, a lot more lows than there is highs, and I think I dealt with them the wrong way. If I didn't win on a favour or I gave something a bad ride or my boss gave out to me or anything, anything, I just ran straight to the drink. So I think from a very young age, I just built up a really bad relationship with drink and why I was drinking. Yeah, men mentally I was in an awful place. I used to say, uh, I used to have lots of people telling me I was an alcoholic and I, I, I have a drink problem. And I used to kind of sort of think it when I used to wake up the next morning and I used to feel awful and I had loads of weight to lose, but it was such a circle. I used to promise myself I wasn't going to have a drink once I'd woken up. And then by the time I lost all my weight, gone racing, got back in the car, I was thirsty because I, it was just a spot that I felt good again. It was just a vicious circle. It was going round and round. I didn't do anything to help myself. If anything, I just got worse. Um, I mean, I used certain substances as well, but alcohol was, was the main painkiller. And things got pretty dark then, to be honest with you. I felt very lonely, you know, I felt so ashamed. I've let any, everyone down, because I had let everyone down. So I had a great season at um, Roger Charlton's the first year. I think I'd ridden, I was second in the Champion Apprentice title, and I, I think I'd ridden 66 winners or so. But I was still drinking the whole time through. I'd had, ridden a Royal Ascot winner, and. You know, things were going great for an apprentice. It wasn't until the following year where I had an injury um, at Lingfield Park. I never really got my career back on track after that injury because my drinking was worse than ever. I was drinking every single night. I was taking cocaine a lot during the week and I was just walking around, driving to the races in an absolute state of fear, worrying whether the drug testers were going to be at the races. Like, there's no way to live. I'd pay anyone any money to try and sort of live that life. It's exhausting. Um, and kind of everyone knew what I was up to, but I kind of, I didn't want to know myself. It was just, I got into that way of life and I was sort of hopelessly addicted to alcohol. Denial can play a big factor in your progression from here to here. Um, because actually you, you're going through these spaces whilst all the time telling yourself that your engagement with that substance uh, or behavior is acceptable, it's not causing any harm and that it's other people's, it's other people's problems um, that are getting in the way of you being able to engage in that. That's quite a common, um, common thought process. It can destroy a career if left completely unchecked. But the great thing is now at the PJA and for the last few years, we've been able to support jockeys and help them with a the recovery to get out the other side. And one of the benefits of racing is racing is a very forgiving sport and many people in racing are open to second chances, but it's always up to the individual to want to take the second chance. It just kept building up and building up and building up to the point where you know, I needed to get help, basically. If I wanted to be a jockey, not only just to be a jockey, but if I wanted to be a good human being, you know, if I want to have a family, if I want to have any sort of decent life whatsoever, I needed to get help. I used to find it so hard to talk to people when I was drinking. If someone came and spoke to me and asked me for my advice or just general conversation about drinking, I don't, they don't realise how much it helps me as well. Like when I go to a meeting and share, I come out feeling 100 times better, you know, because you're just bottling it up. And that's what I did for, God, you know, I'm only 24, but for the, for the years that I was drinking, it was, uh, I felt like I had no one. I was just a little bit afraid 
to really, really reach out and, you know, tell someone about all my demons because I was afraid I was going to lose my career. As soon as I started talking about it to the right people, it just, straight away, it just felt a big weight off my shoulders and I kind of had a little bit of hope then and I thought, well, this isn't too bad actually. My view has always been that anyone that's in trouble, we're there to help them. You can condemn the behaviour, but you don't have to condemn the individual. So as Ray found and as Kira found, we were there to help them. We weren't there to pass judgment on them. And they, pay, they both paid a serious price for their career for it. When I first reached out to Paul Strutters um, from the PGA, he, it was overwhelming how, how helpful he was. You know, he didn't once judge me, he didn't once kind of put me down. He was basically straight away, okay, what are we gonna do now? What are we gonna do to help you? Here's these numbers, ring these people, I'll ring this person, I'll email them. It was, and to this day, he still, he still does that. You know, he's still, he's still so helpful. Waiting to reach rock bottom makes everything harder. Makes it harder on the people around you, makes it harder to come back in your career, and makes it harder on you personally as well. So it's never too late. And the sooner you do it, the quicker the chance of a speedy recovery. And obviously, you could come and speak to us even before you've tested positive. Don't wait for that moment, because if you can see us before that point, you can avoid a suspension, yet still get yourself back on track. The last people I wanted to know or find out was the PGA or the BHA. I didn't want them anything to do with my sort of my drinking or my lifestyle. Um, I didn't realise at the time they were there to help. We work very closely with Sporting Chance, who have a network of, of national counsellors and also can, for those that need it, provide rehab, whether that's a one-week programme, two-week programme or four-week programme. And we will fund that through the PJA if a jockey needs it. Paul Struthers rang me on the way home from the day I tested positive. Um, I wouldn't have been able to financially afford to have gone into rehab if it wasn't for the PGA. They organised everything for me. I literally just had to turn up. We're not judgmental, we're a safe space. So we're not about wagging a finger or saying, oh, you shouldn't be doing it. Um, it's actually about understanding why you are and helping you to come to a decision which is best for you around that. So going and, and getting in contact with um, with the likes of Sport and Chance was a massive, massive step for me. Um, I, f I trusted them, I felt safe around them, I knew that they had a lot of experience helping uh, professional athletes so, you know, I was in safe hands and um, I knew if I just listened to what they were telling me to do that I could get my life back and with my life back would come my career. In the journey of substance use from first time to near death experience there's an awful lot of just one more, there's an awful lot of I'll sort it out tomorrow and actually all that's all that's broken um, when when you when you reach out and, and have an honest conversation with someone about what you're doing, but also with an open mind as as to why you're doing it. From being in that exper like experiencing that position I was in back then, and being 18 months further on sober now, and being able to talk like this is amazing. And I just encourage anyone that are going through any sort of issues drinking, drugs, just to reach out, like, just to speak. There's so many like-minded people out there. You think you're alone. Like, everyone knows an alcoholic. AA meetings, you know, you go there and you don't have to say anything, just sit there. They're the nicest people ever. You can just, they, they approach you, they welcome you in and they talk to you, you know, and just be open. And you leave your ego at the door and just accept sort of your powerless to alcohol. If you're trying to deal with life through alcohol, then straight away, you know, you need to speak to someone. And I just, I just try and tell anyone not, just not to be ashamed to talk about your problems because by, you know, if I, if I was ashamed to talk about my problems and I kept them bottled up, I'd probably be dead. You know, that's how serious it is. It's so many people grab that hand. And if you want it, it's there. If you really think that you're struggling mentally and you've got an addiction, Please just speak to someone, speak to me. I'm at the weigh-in room, in the weigh-in room most days. And before 
what happened to me happens to you, test positive. Look, it was very embarrassing, it was humiliating, and a lot of people sort of haven't forgotten about it. But um, before that happens, you, you, you've got the whole life ahead of you. Yeah, I think that the main um, bonus and, and, and the best thing to come out of recovery is the relationship I have with my fiance Abby and my mum, who's in Ireland. Because I, I brought them to some really low places, you know, as low as I might have went, they came with me, you know. They're the two main people that I probably hurt the most. Um, but thankfully, through recovery, I'm putting a smile on their face. So just to be able to do them things and know that, <coughs> know that um, their mind is at ease, is, is, you know, if that's all I got out of recovery, then, you know, that's good enough for me, you know what I mean? I want to be the best jockey I can. I want to ride as many winners as I can. I want to be reliable. I want to try and keep as many people happy as possible, especially my family. So, uh, life's really good at the moment.